I'm going to show you how you can control any brushless motor using these O-Drive S1 and KUI encoders. I will show you step by step how to assemble it, wire it, and configure it using the O-Drive GUI. And thank you PCBWay for sponsoring this video. All right, so these are all the parts that we'll be using today to control our motor using the O-Drive S1 and this KUI encoder. So I'm gonna go through each item and then start assembling it. So first off, let's take a look at the O-Drive S1. So this is a much stronger motor controller for brushless motors. I went over some previously using the O-Drive Micro, but this S1 is much stronger. It could go up to uh, 50 volts and for the current, it could go up to something like 40 to 80 for peak and operating. Uh, it could be 20. If you use a heat spreader, it could go up to 40. But what you can see here is that these are the main ports here that you'll be using. So you can see here we have the different uh, A, A, B, and C. So this is for the motor. And then we have the DC plus and DC minus. And we have some brake resistors, which we won't be using here. And then you can see here we have some ports. These ports here are for the CAN communication. We have a debug port, and then we have another port right here to connect to your computer, which we'll be using for the motor setup. And then right here, this is for things like your thermistor or encoder connections. By the way, if you're new to the software side of robotics, make sure to check out my master AI and robotics bundle on my website where you get to learn ROS, OpenCV, computer vision using AI, Python, and C++. It's a great way to jumpstart your career in robotics software engineering. So go ahead and check it out on my website. It's gonna be at kevinwoodrobotics.com. I'm gonna leave a link in the video description. So go ahead and check it out. And make sure to check out some of my latest videos on my YouTube channel as well. So this green thing right here, this is for the heat spread. They come with an enclosure. You could use this if you want to get more current out of your system because this will dissipate the heat. But the way this will fit is you can see right here, we have uh, the space here for some of this, these pins to come out on the other side. But you can see you could assemble it like this. Uh, this will be the center part. This is if you end up using the onboard magnet, which in this video we're not going to be using. But you can see that there's a little bit of a standoff here. So the standoff is what's going to allow you to have the separation between the board and this plate right here. So you can see these pads here. These pads is what's going to be in contact with this uh, green pad here. So this green pad, you could just take off this uh, sticker film protector and uh, once you take it off you could go ahead and put it on there so I'm just gonna go ahead and take it off and apply it onto the plate so you can see once you put it on it's gonna look like this and when you put the screws on it's gonna squish it down so you could take this board and then put it directly on top you could have the holes line up like so it's gonna stick out a little bit here that should be fine but you can see that it's gonna rest like this okay so those pads will be in direct contact with the board. And then I'm just going to go ahead and use the screws here to secure the board. So you can see we have these screws. I'm just going to go ahead and put that on real quick. So you can see I put it on here along with the clear case. One thing to note is that these screws require the special head for your screw. This is not the typical kind. So you can see this is the star type shape that you're going to need to use. Okay, now let's talk about the encoders. These are the KUI devices AMT102-V. They changed names to uh, Same Sky, so you might see it as a different name, but on the O-Drive website, they still call it the KUI devices. But you can see inside of here, this is the encoder. So they have a couple of different options for the mounting plate. They have one where you can actually mount the screws on the outside of the encoder. This is the one we're gonna be using. They also have this kind right here. This is the one where you might have the screws inside. The reason I am not gonna use these is because if you look closely, these holes here, this is where the screws would go and they typically require a flatter head type of screw. So those are less common. I'm gonna be using these screws right here with the taller head. So that's why I wanna use the outside one. And then they have this wrench here, which will be used for some alignment, which we'll see in just a little bit. And this main part right here, this is the encoder. So you can see they have uh, the wiring here. If you look closely, we have the B here, you have the five volts and then the A, the X, the ground and the T. 
You can just ignore the T here because the only physical connections we'll be using will be the first five that I just mentioned. But you can see here they also come with a cable here. So the cable is going to connect in here like so. So it's going to snap in. And you can see that it's going to make contact like this. And you could press this little button here or latch to release it and you could pull it out. Okay, So we'll connect that later on after we assemble this onto the motor. So you can see inside of here, we have this adapter piece. This is going to be used for uh, lining some of these color pieces here. But you can see that there's a lot of different colors. The best way to figure out what size is correct is if you go to the same Sky website, they're going to have a user interface that lets you check the right sizes. But I've already found my right size. It's going to be this green one. This is going to be for this five millimeter diameter shaft here. So it's going to slide right in when I put it on. So it should have, it should feel like a pretty snug fit. So just make sure you choose the right color for your shaft, but let's go ahead and see how we're going to assemble this together. So I've made a custom print here. So this piece, you're going to need it. You can see that some of the quality didn't come out too well because my printer needs to do some recalibration. But you can see this piece here. What you want to do is go ahead and place this piece on here. The reason why you need this piece is because the adapter piece, if you look at the hole locations, these hole locations typically is not going to line up directly with your motor. So what you're going to have to first do is place this part in and then once you place this part, then you could place your adapter. Now, if you don't have access to a 3D printer, PCBWay is a great option to get your parts printed. So to get started, it's really simple. You come to the CNC and 3D printing tab and choose 3D printing. Once you do that, you could go ahead and drag your part here. And then you want to go ahead and choose your quantity, choose your units here, choose a different type of materials. There's a lot of different options like resin, nylon, PLA, and so on. You can even choose the colors for certain materials, choose your infill. And then you have options to even add threads to your parts if you want to have screws that go into them. And then just choose a quick product description. And finally, go ahead and submit your part for review. Okay, so now let's go ahead and put this 3D printed part onto the motor here. So we're going to be using some M3 screws here. It's going to go into these counter bore holes. So let's go ahead and put that together. Voila, you can see it's fully assembled now. So the next step is to get your green piece or whatever color piece you have for the shaft adapter. You want to go ahead and slide it inside. And then you want to find your wrench here. So this wrench is going to be used as a spacer. There's two sizes. Just choose the size that works for you. Go ahead and, go ahead and put that underneath this adapter. And then you want to push the adapter all the way down. Okay, So once you push it all the way down, you want to get this black piece, the hollow piece here, and then Put this hollow piece over your shaft adapter so go ahead and push that down you should feel it get tighter and tighter and then there's an additional piece that will help you push it down so for this one just go ahead and put it over and then once you put it over you go ahead and push it down then you'll feel like a slight uh, click to it so once you do that it should be fully assembled like this then you could go ahead and remove this black piece and the wrench here so now that is in the right distance, you could go ahead and put the adapter on here. So this one that I'm using has a two hole, so I'm going to go ahead and put the two screws onto there. Now the final step will be to get the encoder and then put it onto here. So you can see that these tabs here, this will be what is going to be used to secure it because it's going to snap on. You can see that they have these little features here which will allow it to snap into place. So I'm going to go ahead and align this. You're going to notice that there's different uh, notches here. So you want to make sure the notches is lined up correctly. You may have to rotate the part a little bit for it to fit. Uh, but once you do that, you could go ahead and push it in. So I'm going to go ahead and push it in there. You could hear a little snap on the top when you push it down. And then on the bottom, you do the same thing. And you can see now it's fully secure. So you can see now that everything is working, you can see when I spin the motor, this encoder will be spinning with the motor, which is what we expect. So all the assembly part looks good. And now for the actual wiring. So to wire this up, we have these three cables here. This is the UVW. This will connect to the O-Drive S1 here. And you can see that if you look at the pins here, we have uh, C, B, and A. So we could go ahead and use those. They don't really care which one goes to where, so we're just going to choose three and put it in. 
So you can see I have all the motor. I also wired the power here. The power is the two wires in between, these black and red ones. So just make sure that it's nicely snug. When you pull on it, it shouldn't come out. Otherwise, you probably need to tighten it more. Okay, so these encoder cable here, this one is a little bit long. So I'm just gonna go ahead and trim this. So I'm gonna cut it somewhere here. So I'm gonna cut this and you can see this is the inside of the encoder cable. So we have to first open this up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So this is how it looks after I've opened it up. And I also stripped the ends of these cables here. So the next thing you wanna do is Typically, you would want to solder this on to these cables here. So this is going to be the cable that goes to the encoder. But what I opted to do was I'm going to use these connectors here. I have the links for these in my video description. I got these on Amazon, so just check out my Amazon store. But these are really nice because you could just clip them on and then you could remove them later because this is just for testing. So. You could just go ahead and snap them on like that. So I'm going to snap on all of them together. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. So you can see that I snapped them all together. It looks pretty messy here, but again, this is just for prototyping. So I'm just going to care more about the functionality. But the next and final step is we have to map the correct pins to this header here. So we're going to go ahead and go down one by one and then put them in the right place. So for this, for this part, you have to be very careful. You don't want to miscount it. So the first thing I want to point out is when you look at these crimps, so this crimp on one side, I know it's kind of hard to focus, but on one side, there's going to be a little feature. And this feature is going to be contained by these uh, flexible parts here. So it's supposed to snap in and then prevent it from sliding out. So you wanna make sure that tiny feature is facing the right side. So this cable that I'm holding here, this is the green one. So this green one is supposed to map to, uh, if I look at the data sheet, it says is 20. So 20, if I count it, if I'm looking at the bottom row, it's gonna uh, count in increments of two. So this is two, uh, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, and 18. So this 18 here is encoder zero, so it should be 20. 20 is gonna be the Z, so it should be this one here. So, so I went ahead and did the same thing for all the other ones, and it should look something like this. But once you get one connected, the other ones are much easier because now you have a reference point for what the pins should be. But you can see right here, this is the exact wiring diagram that I'm following to connect everything together. Okay, so now let's go ahead and connect this encoder cable here. Once you put it in, you should hear a click. And then on the other end for the actual encoder, you wanna take this cable here and push it in. So now everything is connected. Let's go ahead and run the calibration software and set up our motor and see something moving. So once you have it connected to your computer and powered on, you should see these lights light up and you should be ready to go. So we're gonna jump into the calibration software. So here we're in the O-Drive GUI. My power supply is currently set at 24 volts. So for the over voltage, I'm just gonna put something above that, like 30. And I'm gonna go ahead and go to the next one. So next tab is, they already have some configured motors. We're using this one right here, the D312S-330KV. So they have all the default parameters set for you. You can see that it's a seven pole pair, KV is 330. Current limit is all the way up to 40 amps. So it's a pretty high speed one. Use thermistor, I didn't have that connected, so I'm gonna uncheck that. Go ahead and choose the next one. You can see that there's a couple of different encoder options. The one we're using is this first one here, the AMT10X. Go ahead and choose use index, and then I'm just gonna hit next here. Once we do that, I'm going to leave these as the default settings, click next. Um, I'm not using any of this stuff right here, so I'm not going to check that. But if you do, you could go ahead and check the ones that you're using. So I'm going to go ahead and click next. I'm going to erase and reboot. This is going to take a few minutes. You're going to see a spin. Go ahead and apply the settings, save and reboot. And then it's gonna load, it's pretty fast, just wait a couple seconds. And then now we're gonna run the calibration sequence. So if I click run calibration sequence, 
you're going to see it start moving, but it's going to turn a few times and then you can see that it calibrated successfully. And go ahead and click save and reboot. This is going to save all the settings for you. And then it's going to take a few seconds, just let it load a little bit. And then finally you could run the index search. So after it does that, it should be ready to go. So let's go ahead and come into the dashboard. So this dashboard, you can see that we're reading this motor live here. It's plotting the velocity, position, velocity, and current. It's going to go ahead and move my uh, screen here so you can see a little bit better. But yeah, you can see that it's plotting everything. The position, we could control it in different modes here. So if I control it in position mode, if I turn it on, I could toggle it back and forth. You can see that this motor is pretty responsive. We could take bigger steps too, like five and negative five. This resulted in a velocity limit. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear the error here. But again, you could turn this back on and you can see that it toggles back and forth. It's very responsive. We can also run it in velocity mode here. So in the velocity mode, if I turn it on, spinning it at one here, and I could speed it up a little bit more. This is at two. So you can see that this motor is pretty fast. The spinning at 10, come back down to zero. And if I turn it to torque mode, I could go ahead and turn it on. I'm gonna slowly ramp it. So I don't wanna stop it too fast, but you could feel how it feels. Go ahead and turn that off. So yeah, that's how you get everything set up. So hopefully you found this video helpful and give a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.